time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament. Zanziar Human Trill Leg 2. Um, Zanziar has been advancing rather nicely. Here's Mr. Sliver, Scarlet Dane. Um, and it's getting towards the end. I, I got I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I thought maybe it would end last video. I'm getting in that feel where I feel like it could end any video. It could end this video, but it could it could continue um, because we're kind of at this. There's a lot of drama happening, so it could continue just because I need more time to digest the weight of what's going on. Um, but I feel like it's still we're we're at the we're at what we're nearing the climax um that's my thought I, but i'm wrong oftentimes but since that's the case um or since i believe that might be the case i thought i'd take this opportunity to speak to the people who've been following along with the tournament um you know in in relatively near uh real time people have been watching them the episodes as they've been uploaded um it might be since uh i spoke in an earlier video of this um series about this Pablo Origins, how we became human play by forum game I've been playing. That's taken up one of my two tables. I have two tables that I, I can play on. Um, because of that, it might be a while before I continue with this tournament, just because I it's nice to have a spare table to play on when I feel like playing. So the play by forum game is great, except that I can only play when it's my turn and then it's only for a short amount of time. So I feel like I'd like to have a table open to um, work on some other things, you know, do, for, for some other video work, and then also to learn games, and then just to, you know, if I ever want to play for my own enjoyment, I'm unable to do that now. It's either I'm I'm doing the Origins game or I'm doing the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. So until that's done, or until I kind of get some other projects taken care of, it might be that the tournament has to go on hold. Um, and I apologize for that. I'm, I'm really enjoying how things are going. I don't want to stall. It's about a year anniversary for the this first tournament. Um, you know, it, was, it was in the summer at some point when I started. Um, and so, that's kind of meaningless. But um, anyway, after this Zanzier, we might have to take a break, which is maybe not a bad spot. It feels like it's about halfway through the tournament. You know, we have, uh, I think, three legs concluded. Um, some other legs are waiting. Oh, another thing I need to do with the table is I need to work out some rules for certain things, uh, like the US patent. A chrononauts combination game. Um, I got a good framework for that, but I need to try it out. Uh, for some reason, doesn't see, feel like it's like super fun for me to play by myself. Um, I might bring it to some other people to kind of get uh, the flavor of how it plays with humans. Um, or maybe it was just the mood I was in when I was working it out. Um, I think I think what it is is when you play a game where there, this one has more more rules left to me than um, the other combination games I've done. Uh, it'll be probably the third uh, for this tournament. And um, the first one was very simple combination. The second one was a little more complicated the way they combine. This one it feels like there's a, there's a lot more leeway for choices because I've actually added some new mechanisms to the game. And that maybe makes it less enjoyable to play because there's always this kind of, there's this, there's, the containment is gone, you know, the, there's, there's almost too much choice and there's that, that phenomenon when you have like an infinite array of choices, how, how that can leave one feeling dissatisfied because part of your brain is always looking at the, um, the paths you didn't take or, and you know, another part of your brain is always weighing the options and it's just uh, maybe more than a brain can handle or mind can handle rather. Um, but that's a, that's a bit of a tangent. Let's go back in and play Zanziar. And what, well, 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 we left off, Chopper had just narrowly escaped, um, Sweet Pea's onslaught. And these little blood markers here are because Sweet Pea is out of control markers. So those are Sweet Pea lands. Um, so I was saying that more to remind myself, well, as much to remind myself as to tell you. Um, he just escaped and he's up here. No, those are sweet pea people. Oh yeah, he's in Basilia. Sorry, I'm just kind of coming back to this myself. Um, escape sweet pea. Sweet pea. It's uncertain as to whether or not she's giving chase. I mean, she definitely didn't bring the heart of her um, people there. Going instead to Nafid. I'm taking Nafid. I gotta get this ghost out of the way. Um, but she did bring uh, Honeypot, which was her smaller group, to Bucked and did some recruitment there. That 
with those with those recruits, she could uh, still give up chase because remember, Honeypot's people do have that teleport. Um, so she kind of split her forces. She she had gone in with both both of her armies in the west here to chase Chopper off. Um, so Chopper's kind of had some had some time to recoup. Uh, Audric's the Chancellor. He's fitted out with a full army of five. Um, he is revealed, however, and people know what he's after. And one of those things he's after are these cities over here. He had sent Derek the Dragon Warrior uh, over there to try and take the cities. Derek's kind of had a series of misadventures. He fell in a swamp, hurt his squad of Dwarven Warriors, um, I think ran into an Archmage's Tower, which was not good for him. Whole lot of misadventures. So now he has to. Now he's about to enter into Odrixia. Oh gosh, I didn't even notice that. This is Odrix the Chancellor. So this town is maybe named after him or one of his forebears. And here we have kind of an interesting um, narrative uh, uh, choice that that the the randomness of the cards has dealt us. Um, so Odrixia is currently um, controlled by Sweet Pea here. She controls the whole Dwarven state actually. Um, I think if Sweet Pea had his character card, Chopper's character card, she would have won already. Yep, she would have already already met met those. Control the ancient. Oh gosh, I didn't even notice this. Okay, so it says the ancient dwarven cities. Oh, this is a problem. Angmar, Odrixia, Idoria, and Bucked. So it's it's not just the dwarven cities they have to get. They have to get Bucked in. Angmar, which is, I don't know where Angmar is. I'll have to find it. Oh, that was a big oversight. Um, I'm sorry, Chopper, that was not fair. But anyway, back to this narrative. So, um, I will say Chopper didn't notice that either. Or maybe maybe I'll just fudge it and say that he just has to take these two. I think I might just fudge it. Because I've already given Chopper some, some, you know, he had to deal with the dragon, and, you know, he's kind of getting batted around. So, We'll go with my mistake. The dwarven, ancient dwarven cities are the current dwarven cities. That's fair. I don't know if it's fair, but that's how it's going to be. Um, so anyway, she presumably is a non-dwarf. I don't think any of these other characters are a dwarf, and she's she's holding it with the she's holding um, Odrixia with the second le legion of Gori, which is you know kind of kind of like Rome. So she has this this very foreign legion holding the dwarven states. And the dwar you know, the relationship between dwarves and humans is different than the relationship between Romans and some some other culture uh, of humans. So it's it's this very, very um, very foreign sort of occupation. It's it's beyond I think what we can conceive of. It's like if we were uh, if if our if our nation was maybe occupied by elephants. Um, though most people watching this probably haven't had their nation occupied by anyone, even humans, in their lifetime. Imagine if it was something like an elephant. I don't know. I don't know how that would be. But anyway, she has the, the Second Legion of Gori holding the city. Here comes Derek the Dragon Warrior coming in on behalf of Odrix the Chancellor, who is this big-time Dwarven Chancellor. And he happens to have with him a squad of Dwarven Warriors. So he has this big claim to... Um, the Odrixian throne, or I guess Odrixian council chamber. I don't, I don't know who who actually runs Odrix. Um, but anyway, that's kind of interesting. So now he's got to deal with this second unit, uh, second legion of Gori. One one particular particularity. I know I've been talking a lot about the dwarven um, cities, the ones that are currently dwarven cities. Is you can't use Khan there, which is. It makes it harder to take a town generally, because well, you know a common strategy, at least that I employ, is you just you just bully the people into <laughs> standing over, so you don't have to deal with a fight. I think in this case, since they can't use Khan, uh, I think he's going to go ahead and just attack the Second Legion of Gori, and uh, maybe he'll put him back here in the Magic Row, and no problem, destroy the Second Legion very easily. Odrix the Chancellor has fled north to Abo, where he convinced these peasants to join his group. So that gives him Abo, and the peasants aren't bad. They give you well, they're they're not particularly good in a battle. Um, they have that con ability. They're, they're decent at con, but Odrix um, forbids the use of con. 
Uh, Chapar was able to use Khan before Odrix was revealed because then he was just uh, a regular army. But since he's shown his face, his people have to be honest now. So they're they're kind of useless in a fight, but they're good in moving in forests. So, and if Odrix wants to continue to run away from Sweet Peace forces, he's going to have to head eastward towards Largos, which is lots of forests. Sweet Pea has just moved. I've done all her moves. Um, the Madman has moved south and continues chasing Snugbug um, out of Bratisar towards the west. Um, the dog followed him, strangely enough. And then, uh, where else did she go? She took Pelagros, so she's taken another Hagen city. And um, where is that little marker? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Harubi Surma has taken over um, Honeypot's group. She kind of put him on top, I think because these little scrolls are kind of annoying to have under there every time I was picking it up to look at the guys, the little scrolls would fall off. So we just put him on top. It really doesn't matter which one of them is leading. Um, anyway, went into Nizni Tajil, recruited a unit, got rid of some peasants, and that's about it. So kind of going in the direction of Odrix the Chancellor, but not quite, you know. Uh, I guess there was this water here. You wouldn't really be able to go up the mountain. So yeah, that was the closest way if she wanted to follow him. And arriving in Nidar, um, Snugbug has just revealed himself to be the high priest of Vidal Sis. Um, how how wise of it was him for to 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 reveal himself? I'm not certain. I mean, he's revealed his goals, but it allows him to split into two guys, and now he doesn't have to play the game of chase quite so much because he has a little bit of help, more actions to be made. Um, and Nidar is actually a great town for him to be in because it allows him to look for treasure twice if he can take control of it. So he has to decide, you know, one, how he's going to take control of it. Um, but then once he does, he can also search more. So... He's kind of got a little clock ticking here as the madman follows with his dog. Um, looks like two turns. Two turns to take the city and get ready for a fight. First go again. Not a lot happened. Um, Derek the Dragon Warrior brought his group uh, eastward through the mountains. And Odrix the Chancellor took this mine up here in the north, which is we know is one of his goals is to control two minds. So he's pursuing his goals. I'm not gonna have to keep track of these things anymore because he's used all of his magic. I probably did, didn't even need to use them anyway, I could remember. Um, and he's teleported up, one, two, three, four, five, right up here to catch up with Odrix the Chancellor. Now, this is not going to be likely that he takes them out. Odrix is, is rather strong. And he had to leave Honeypot and the Riders of Largos behind in because he can only take three three or he can only have three units go. I wonder if he has to be one of those units. I don't know. Oh well, we just had him go. I'm gonna set up for a combat. Actually, does he want to try to talk his way out of it? I don't think so. I think he wants to take he wants this. Chopper wants this. P has just played her whenever card. There's a lightning strike somewhere on this this field. It, uh, it can't hurt Odrix, but it's going to hurt someone else. So she's going to roll. I'm just going to, I guess I'll just re-roll fives and sixes. Two. So the second Legion of Gori just got struck by lightning. For Sweet P, Hururi's con attempt against the Orc Horde was unsuccessful. So now it's going to be straight up combat. Uh, which she does not do as well at. Let's see, enemy is not commanded by a human. Oh, yeah, so he's only at six. Um, yeah, so it's six, uh, or, or sorry, 13 against nine, 17, 26. It's going to be a slaughter. Um, 30 against 18, so that's 12 points we're going to have to take. Uh, the orc army will take seven, and then this guy will will take um, five. Now, Sweet Pea could very well order her people to escape and maybe get both of them out of there, but she's going to just press the attack. Um, so Harubi is going to try to con the orc horde again. That's a four, and it's a straight up roll because they both have cons of two against three. So she's done something. 
he's not going to fight during this battle round. That's all. Um, so he's confused. Uh, I guess we'll put him. We'll just put him like that to show he's confused. And then these guys are going to kill him. I don't even need to roll. Their their totals are just huge. Um, what I one thing I do need to find out is if that if the damage carries over. I'm pretty sure it does. I think it does. It makes more sense. Um, yeah, so they, they've destroyed his forces there. Odd move by Sweet Pea, and now she has kind of an odd decision, and here's why. Currently she's right on the border between Gori and Vidal Sis. Um, the High Priest of Vidal Sis has this ability that if it, all enemies who are in Vidal Sis have to reveal their cards. So if the madman goes into Vidal Sis, he has to reveal who these two armies are. Now I will tell you, I guess just straight up, I'm going to tell you that one of those cards, I think, if I remember correctly, actually it could be wrong, but I think one of those cards could be um, the person who Sweet Pea is. Now Sweet Pea definitely senses that the game is about to be up. Um, she needs to get here as soon as possible to, to stop him from uh, buttressing himself, or like uh, conversely, she could just um, try and take this mine. Now she's not certain, and neither am I, if the dog can claim the mine. I think the dog can, actually. So she could take that mine, but then the dog could just take it back. Um, so she needs to stop the priest of Vidalsis from doing anything. Uh, she feels like she's the one who has to do the the stopping, um, rather than people stopping her. So, does she go or does she not? I think she goes. So she's gonna go there, and that's only gonna that's gonna give um, him just one more turn to try and prepare. Her movement card says nothing of note occurs. That's like the fifth of those in a row I've had, by the way. I, maybe I didn't shuffle them well. So, let's find out who she is, or if it's even revealed here. She's not Eleth the Healer, but she is. Prince Eric Fatland of Hagen, which tells us why she's trying to take over Hagen. Um, her goals are some mines, I think, and she has to take Hagen and another country uh, of a particular list. And so the country she owns on that list is Largos, uh, which maybe tells you why she did the desperate move of, of that attack against um, Chopper. She was trying to stop him from taking Pulvis. And it's a little foolish of her to reveal now, because now he might try to take Pulvis. So if he does, it's going to stop her from winning. Um, he has two turns to get there. I think it'll take him two turns. I don't think he has any... Oh, actually, he does get that movement bonus, so... But that'll still... That... Yeah, that'll... Yeah, that'll... He can get there next turn. Uh, she's got to hope the forces of Pulvis can hold up. I don't think they, they're very strong. If I remember correctly, I don't know where Pulvis is. We'll deal with that later. Um, yeah, so she's in a bad way. She probably shouldn't have revealed that. But I think she's kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, and she she really feels it's pressing to get to Nidar. And also, you know, she could take Hagen and then take another town. Let's take a look at her, her goals. Um, she could also take Kudak. Yeah, and she's close to Kudak as well. She actually has these forces in Disney Tadril. This ghost is always in the way, gosh. Um, sorry, I'm just going to put the ghost over there for, for a little bit. Um, that could that could take uh, Kudak, and that would work for her as well. Um, so, she's revealed herself. Now it's time for Grosberg, the Orc Shaman. He's going to be going down to Rog. He'll probably take it, but I'll come back and let you know if he doesn't. Uh, it's Snugbug's turn. He spent. He broke off into three groups. He got Gwyndam of the Forest last turn. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, so he has three groups now. One of his, well, for his turn, I think he might re remix them up for um, this next next uh, uh, oncoming onslaught. But one of them, um, he he put Sweet Viatus of Nixon Lake alone. She looked. She found two items. So did the High Priest of Vidal Sis, who's alone. Uh, Gwyndon of the Forest did a recruitment, found an orc army, I believe, no, an orc hunting party, and the orc hunting party had with it the Death Maul from before, which I think, if you recall, was the Ghost of Tovards. That's got to do it for me right now. It's too stressful. There's 
there's too many things about to happen, and I, I, I mean, my head can take it, but can my heart? I don't think so. I think it's starting to, to shatter with stress, and I think it's uh, sort of what I, what I talked about in my tangent earlier, in terms of um, combining games, um, and how it can it can lead the mind into too many possibilities, and thus. Um, be really hard on you that's how this is because I don't know who's gonna win or what's gonna happen there's just there's too many things that people can do and I have to in a sense make those choices it's tough with the help of my real people friends uh, well I think this is definitely got to conclude next time on the real people multi-game solitary megatron human true lake 2 Zanziar